Let's lift our hands and worship the Lamb. Father, we honor you. It's a privilege to be here. We bless you, Jesus. 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 Can we lift our hands and honor him? Jesus is in this place. He's alive in this place. Let's bless his name. Let's bless his name. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. We worship you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's hold our hands together and pray in the spirit just for a few minutes. To open up our spirits. Let's connect as a family of faith. All those following us online. Just join us as we pray in the spirit. We have come before the God that can change men. We have come before the God that can turn lives around. Are you praying in the spirit, Koinonia?
to change our life, to change our life, to change our destiny. Lord, we know and we trust you to do this and more tonight. To the glory of your name, we honor you, we believe in you. We believe in you. We believe in you. We believe in you. Hallelujah. One prayer point before you sit down. Lord, what you want me to see, I must see tonight. Go ahead and pray. There is something your eyes can see that will change your life forever. Open my eyes, O God. Open my eyes, O God. Open my eyes, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated as you greet your neighbor left and right. Hallelujah. We apologize for using this venue today again. Um, especially to those in the second overflow. Sorry for all the noise. The Lord will bless us for our sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Um, we do these things because we love Jesus. And there are four dimensions to love that you must never forget. This for somebody may be the word for you. Whenever you say you love someone, whenever... You talk about the expressions of love. When you break love, there are four components that make love. Number one is passion. There cannot be love, true love, when there is no passion. Passion. When you love someone, there must be passion. Extreme, unashamed passion. Number two, commitment. Even when your passion fails, commitment should not fail. Commitment. You have entered a covenant with yourself to remain faithful and to remain vulnerable regardless of your emotions. That's commitment. Commitment has nothing to do with desire. It has everything to do with a vow. A vow for continuity. You may not guarantee that you will be passionate at the same level at all times but a covenant keeps you committed are we together number three sacrifice the third description of love is sacrifice there cannot be love without sacrifice Those in love know that one of the things love does to you is it makes you a fool. <laughs> if you don't become a fool loving properly, then that sacrifice, it will sting your ego, it will sting your reputation. But that's the price you have to pay for genuine love. And the last key is pleasure. Love is not all about pain. If your love is all about pain, check it again. Love cannot be all about pain. So the Bible says, he daily loads us with benefits. I want you to check these four things against your Christian work. If all you have received in your life is sacrifice and pain, you have a right to demand the other dimensions and say, Lord, I can't suffer forever. There's got to be a morning after seasons of night. So, there are times when we enjoy His power there are times when the joy of the Lord fills our heart. There are times when we will have to cry all on account of our love for Him. There are times when we will have to seek Him regardless of our emotional feeling. Let me tell you something. When you pursue God emotionally, you will be in for a shock. Because there are times 
uh, that life may not give you the best expression to love God emotionally. Are we together? So you've got to say, Lord, I am crying. In the midst of disappointment, in the midst of all of these things, I cannot say I'm passionate about you tonight, but I'm committed. Are we together? That's the heart and the spirit of a lover. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you, Lord. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. How I love to worship you. And how I love to stand for you. It's my song to him. And even though it hurts me for every step I take. And even though it pains me for every move I make. But I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. Yes, I love you. I love you. And there are blessings that the Bible says are for lovers. Not just prayer warriors. It says, no eye has seen. Have you read that in your Bible? No ear has heard. Neither has it come into the heart of any man. What God has in store. Not for them that shout, I love you, I love you. Them mean it. Those who are serious addicts of God. May that happen to you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, very quickly, before... We hear what the Lord has for us tonight. I'm holding in my hand a, a catalog of all koinonia messages right from 2011. And um, I just felt in my spirit to guide us for a minute or two on how to maximize the benefits of these teachings. Every single one of these teachings are powerful, revelatory, and will bless us. But only if we know how to take advantage of them. There are very few people here who can boast of having heard all of them and having listened to them again. Say Amen. There are so many messages. In fact, while I was going through the list, um, I was in awe myself because I can't begin to imagine that all these teachings touching different areas from family life, spiritual growth, prayer, faith, our victory in Christ, passion for glory, the counsel of God, the kingdom, the Holy Spirit, you know, podcasts and so on and so forth, teaching on persecutions, um, the world system, prophecies, um, you know, the body of Christ, and so on and so forth, the Holy Spirit, you can, I mean, did you know that you can just pick these teachings literally, even if you never had an encounter with a man of God, you can pick these teachings and stay with them, and you will encounter God in very solid ways. You heard the testimony of that gentleman, our brother, about to commit suicide, frustrated in his life, and just one message, walking in purpose. See, the, the unique thing about these messages is, aside from the thoughts, the unique dimensions of the teachings, there is an anointing upon the messages that will achieve the same result regardless of what is being talked about. 
So you can be listening to a teaching on relationship. Are we together? And you find out that you are healed. The anointing doesn't care that is relationship. The moment your faith is released and there is an infirmity in your body, the anointing was designed to reproduce the garden of Eden in your life. So whilst your mind is receiving information uh, as regards finances and whatever it is, the Holy Ghost will not see a sick body and pass. No. For as long as your faith is alive. Are we together now? That's the kind of miracle that happened to our brother. So I want to challenge you. You see, if you want to um, receive this teaching, you have to create, first and foremost, have a compendium of this. I believe that the media department can and should make this available. Please, media, make this available to as many people who want to have this copy. Number two is to, if you can, group them on your system or your phone or whatever it is, create a way of grouping these teachings according to the central thoughts that they communicate. You can group them, maybe the economic system of the kingdom, financial dominion, and the wealthy place, you know, you can group them. So that when you are trusting God to rise in the area of finances, you will not be studying um, on intimacy with the Holy Spirit. As important as that is, it may not achieve that result. Are we together now? You will be blessed, but you have to break these messages in such a way that they serve their purpose as when needed. So that even when you are giving the messages to people, you are blessing people. If they want everything, you can give them. But there are times when, for instance, someone is telling you, I used to be a pastor, I used to be on fire for God. But right now, I'm smoking, I'm drinking, I'm not serious with God. Now, giving that person um, a message on um, maybe a miracle service, it may help the person, but it may not really help the person so much. You will want to give that person a message like the principle of renewal. Are we together? Or why revivals die. Or gaining spiritual stature. That way you will minister more strategically to the person. So every one of us should have this. I'm, I'm sure that the media will have this. And you should have this so that you can go through the teachings. Don't just listen to what is available. There are so many teachings designed to guide us. I mean, I can begin to talk about, we have the eternal counsel of God, the multidimensional workings of the word. Um creative power of the spoken word our victory in Christ redeeming the time be like him um, kingdom advancement kingdom economics one to three you know, several other teachings the apostate church fasting and prayer the full gospel evidence of genuine intimacy um, prophetic insight to God's agenda the prize for an extraordinary anointing, the mystery of death and glory, reality of heaven and hell, the secret of sustained glory, envoys of his presence, and then the warfare series now, the weapons of our warfare, pulling down stronghold, you know, the success and breakthrough series, activating breakthrough, dominion through excellence, supernatural exploits, give me this mountain. Um, I mean, there, there are so many. The protocol of an encounter confronting the darkness, the error, the darkness of error and apostasy, um, spiritual timing, reigniting a passion for the Holy Spirit, koinonia, ancient secret to power and relevance, spiritual strategy for renewal, divine direction, The power of hope, the power of preparation, prophetic implication of associations, you will want to listen to that message. The reality of spiritual laws, the faith that works, awake doubt that sleepers, I can go on and on and on again. All these teachings were designed to build you. They were designed to build you. Are we together now? And I'm saying it especially for those online, if we can have a, an updated version of the catalog online so that um, those who follow us online, there are thousands of people who follow us online, can have access to this and um, 
be blessed by them. Every one of these teachings are available and they are all free. It's a price we have made for the body of Christ as our contribution to seeing that the body grows. I want you to stretch your hands in one minute to this and i like us to pray and say, Lord, a fresh anointing upon it. We thank you for what these teachings have been doing to the nations. But in the name of Jesus, a renewed fire. Can you stretch your hands? Lord, we send these teachings afresh to nations, to prisons, to hospitals. Mighty miracles in a fresh dimension. Some of them are old teachings, but we declare a new anointing upon them. In the name of Jesus, we send them to the nations across Asia, across Europe, across the Caribbean, all across Africa. We send them as envoys to God, messengers of encounters, messengers of koinonia. Are you praying? We are praying from here and Lord, we are speaking. All those who have these teachings on their phones, their laptops, the grace to begin to listen to them. Lord, we pray that there be miracles, multiplied miracles, multiplied miracles, multiplied miracles. We open up the gates of new territories. Hedonistic nations be open to these teachings. The Middle East, Iraq, Iran, Palestine. Let there be men and women, oh God, that will take these teachings. May they bless ministries. May they bless individuals. May they go where we cannot go. We send them as messengers of fire. May they go with the hand of the Lord, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. May kings and nobles listen to this teaching. Let it shape governments. Let it shape territories. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release angels, new angels, assigned to take these teachings. New passion, new zeal. Prophetic evangelists all across this nation taking these teachings to unreached places. Hallelujah. Lord, we anoint this. I lay my hands upon it on behalf of your people. And Lord, we declare a fresh anointing upon these teachings. In the name of Jesus, a fresh dimension of the workings of the Holy Ghost upon these teachings. Let them go far further than we can imagine and produce great wonders in the lives of people. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to shout a big Amen. Shout it again, a big Amen. Amen. All right, pick up your writing materials. Let's get to the business of the night. Amen and amen and amen. It is God's desire that among the many things that happen to us, that we move from one dimension of grace to another. There are seven blessings that Jesus received in redemption. And gave them to the church. It says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, honor, and it lists all of them. A complete and a balanced Christian life. Please pay attention. It's a Christian life that has, through the grace of God, accessed all these dimensions. Are we together now? And um, in the last, maybe the last few months, I've been like, I would call it a spiritual archaeologist. There has been such a renewed passion in my heart to study the church, the ecclesia, to study the body of Christ afresh. This strange entity called the body of Christ. I've had a renewed passion to study the body of Christ and to study the untapped riches. Please pay attention. That are locked in in this mysterious entity called the body of Christ. One of the things that I've been sharing with us, and we had a revision on that last week, is the power of the body. The ability to discern the body. The Bible tells us in a very uncomfortable way, how that the reason why there is a lot of weakness in the body 
the reason why there is a lot of limitation, please listen, in the body, the reason why we are unable to, to, um, to not represent the full dimension of the glory and the power of God is because we have not been trained largely to discern the body and what it represents. First Corinthians 11. Let's just look at that scripture. First Corinthians 11. Don't look at the projector screen. Open your Bible. First Corinthians 11. If you don't have a Bible, buy one. It's a gold watch setting. Cancel the money for your hair and buy a Bible. Jordan is in front here. It's available. The shop can be opened after Koinonia. We, we buy nonsense. We buy things that don't contribute overall to our spiritual growth and we ignore the things that have life. The Bible, listen, Jesus himself giving a parable. He says the kingdom is like a treasure. Listen. Someone had a farm and there was a treasure in that farm but he did not know what treasure he had. Are we together? And he said one found that treasure. And when he found that this land had treasure, he went and sold what? Every other thing to raise the money to buy that land. So it's worth it to make whatever sacrifice that will give you access. You see, in the spirit, I'm digressing for a reason. Don't major on the minors and then minor on the majors. There are some things when you hold them, other things must follow. Are you getting the point now? So don't chase foolish and mundane, carnal things. This one thing, when you get it, other things must follow. For instance, the Bible says, get wisdom. Get wisdom. When you get wisdom, with wisdom comes wealth. With wisdom comes security. With wisdom comes divine direction. So, instead of praying for wealth, praying for divine direction, you cry for wisdom. Are we together now? You, you have to learn that certain things in the kingdom are contained in others. By getting certain major things, you get others too. I'll give you an instance. If the governor of Kaduna State is to come to Zaria, for instance, trying to bring the governor, the commissioner, the emir, is a very foolish thing. Just try to bring the president. Are we together? In bringing the president, every other person down that cadre must come. Are we together? So when you seek the presence of God, other things follow. When you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, if you are truly doing that, other things follow. So what you are receiving in Koinonia, listen, I'm saying this because there are people who think we are neglecting certain levels of spiritual growth. You may say, ah, but Apostle, why are we not teaching on this dimension and this dimension? What I'm teaching you is a superior dimension. It's a master key, I guarantee you. When you hold it, you will not need to look for other things. Because they will come. Are we together now? It's very important. Oh God, give me tea. Give me bread. That's the key to frustration. There are certain things when you have, that's the end of it. May you have it in Jesus' name. May God open your eyes to have it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let's look at 1 Corinthians. I was saying something about the body of Christ. Um, 29 and 30. Thank you. It says, for he that eateth now, he was talking of communion. Right, the Holy Communion, Paul was helping them. Because um, theologically speaking, many of them, you know, the wines those days did not have a system of preserving it like we do now. So after a while, the wine would become alcoholic. And certain people started helping themselves with that alcoholic wine. So communion, that should just be just a shot of it, enough to help you. Certain people in the body of Christ who were custodians, maybe in the welfare department, started going out of the normal context of communion and they were drinking in the house of the Lord. Are we together? So those who think God did not talk about drinking, here it is. It says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, unworthily without respect, foolishly without revelation of what it means. 
it says, drink it unto what? Eat it and drink it damnation unto himself. But then broadly speaking, it says, not discerning the Lord's body. So the extended understanding of this is not just the bread and the cup. But that if you do not discern the Lord's body, there is a danger. For this cause, not for many causes, for this singular reason. That God has a body that needs to be discerned for a man to succeed. And the inability to discern that body has produced this. For this cause, how many? How many? It didn't say few. For this cause, the inability to understand this mystery entity called the body of Christ. It says many are weak. The word weak there does not just mean weak like you don't have energy. Trust me, it means weakness in every fashion. It says, for this cause, many are what? Sick among you. And many sleep. The word sleep, there is the word die. It's God speaking to us. That means somewhere in the body of Christ is a key that corrects weakness. Somewhere in the body of Christ is a key that can turn sick people to become healthy. Somewhere in the body of Christ is a mystery that can keep men long. Listen, please. There are certain dimensions of spiritual reality that your personal work with God cannot deliver unto you. You have to learn this. Everything is not delivered to you on the platform of your personal altar and work with God. There are certain dimensions of God that only come on account of the corporate release. The, the treasures that come, they are not given to a person. They are only given through a person, but they are for the body. There are certain dimensions of God that will never show up when you are alone. That dimension only comes when believers are gathered together. If believers are not gathered together, that dimension of spiritual activity cannot happen. For instance, it, no one man could bring the Holy Spirit to the earth. Are we together? 120 people had to be gathered together. That spiritual formation created the room for the Holy Ghost to come. Are we together now? When the church was being threatened, right? The church was being threatened. The Bible says that they prayed, but they came together. So there are certain levels of persecution that comes upon the church. The prayer of one man cannot stop it. It takes the prayer of a body. And in God's economy, two or more people form the body. One man, there are certain possibilities. It says where two or three are gathered in my name. Is God helping us please? One of the things that I really want us to have is spiritual intelligence. Say spiritual intelligence. It is the secret that helps men to do business in God's economy. You have to understand how God's system operates. So, there are treasures locked up in the body. Ah, you know, while I was preparing to come, the Holy Ghost gave me a revelation that touched my heart. And this is what he said. The Bible tells us, um, that when Jesus was born, listen, there was a star. Is that true? A star that was shining so bright at the east and the Magi, those we call the wise men, they saw that star and they followed that star and came where Jesus was. Is that true? And then they bowed down and they worshipped him. Now listen, a savior was born on earth. Listen, who could do a lot of things, but there were people who did not know. So on that earth, there was someone who was born, but they could not know. However, certain people decided to pursue and say, let's find out. And they found out that Savior and it blessed them. Do you know that when Jesus walked upon the earth, there were people who were never healed? I believe they were not interested in healing. Because in that dispensation, there was a man who had the ability to solve their problem. Jesus did not heal every sick person. He healed those who came to him. He healed those who pursued him and sought after him. He didn't just come and volunteer and say, I'm concerned about this, your situation. No. When people were hungry, 
Jesus said, feed them. And the production of the miracle, Andrew had to come with five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, okay, you have come to me. He always responded to people's hunger and passion. Let me tell you something. God is not a welfare officer. He responds to faith and a heart that believes. Your coming to God is proof that you know He is. He exists. And then that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Say Amen. Are we together now? Let me have... Um, come. I need the guys. Four or five gentlemen. Please come. Just stand here. Watch this. I want to teach you something very powerful. Stand. Everybody open your eyes, your ears, your spirit. Two more people, please. This is the body of Christ. Listen. This is the body of Christ. Hold this, Patrick. Hold this. You are here touching every life. I worship you. Let me have this. I, I worship, worship you. You, you are, are here. Any other thing? Not hang well, not handkerchief. Thank you, sir. Everybody lift, project out what I've given you. Watch this. This is the body of Christ. Are we together? In the body of Christ, there is a phone, true or false. In the body of Christ, there is a Bible, true or false. In the body of Christ, there is a handkerchief, true or false. So when God speaks, He speaks based on the provision that is in the body. So God says, anyone who wants to make a call, make a call. And now, this guy wonders, is there ever a phone in the body of Christ? Somewhere in the body is somebody who represents a dimension of God that can help men make calls. Follow me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When God looks, He does not see, what's your name? He does not see brother Kingsley. He sees his body representing all the possibilities in him. So God tells you, where is the piece of paper that contains the blessings on your life? And you say, oh God, all I have known in my life is that the body of Christ has pure water. And God says, no way. Check, there is a paper. There is a dimension that holds this possibility. But that it does not happen in your life does not mean it's not here. Hear what I'm saying. Are we together? This is the power that is vested upon the body. The body is part of Christ. So this is a modem. A modem helps you to access the internet. And God says there is a possibility in me for that dimension. But because you do not know the spiritual system that can help you access this, are we together now? You may be suffering for this cause, for not discerning what this mystery entity called the body is. Some people will remain jobless forever. Listen, please. Some people will remain sick forever. <laughs> Hear what I'm teaching you. Hear what I'm teaching you. I spoke, was it last week or two weeks ago, about spiritual tribes. The system of God that represents His possibilities. I told you that our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship. But kingdom advancement is based on covenant. You must understand this. So every time God wants to reveal His dimension to a dispensation, there is a mantle backed up by a throne in heaven that is responsible for that operation. It is those mantles that are represented as lampstands. Are you following me now? They are dimensions of the operation of the spirit. So what happens is, God finds one man, enters a covenant with that man, and the covenant is such that it can authorize the spirit to communicate certain dimensions of spiritual reality 
through that man to that dispensation. And every other person who must work in this dimension cannot ignore both the person and the office of this man. Are we together? So, I am God. Watch this. You are thirsty. And you are saying, oh God, quench my thirst. And God said, I refer you to my body. It's no longer a prayer point. Somewhere in my body, there is a system that was designed to quench your thirst. But through ignorance, arrogance, the lies that we pastors teach people, are we together? We pastors come and because of our ego, we teach people that single-handedly encountering us is encountering the body. So, they camp around the dimension of what we have and do not open up themselves to the multifaceted dimensions. Let me tell you something. Every custodian of this dimension is imperfect to a fault. Now, this is usually where we are cheated because we are sensing that the vessels that hold this perfect gift must be perfect themselves. So we are looking for patterns that look like what we can appreciate before we open up our hearts. Are we together? So you get to a church and um, they may have all kinds of imbalances. Maybe criticizing a Pentecostal church or whatever it is. And they may not allow praying in tongues publicly. And when you see that pattern, it's not what you are used to. You were not trained that way. You were trained to pray and blast and roll on the floor. But the man of God has that limitation. However, in spite of that limitation, there is a spiritual possibility committed to him that if you approach that meeting with an open heart, you will still live with that grace. Are we together? Now, watch this. There are people who, who have opened up themselves to certain men of God, certain meetings, certain encounters. You can come to a church like this and a meeting like this and even be angry. Why are they, um, why are they playing instruments like this? And just because you identified with that system, certain possibilities come upon you. You were not opening your heart to believe oh, just because you found yourself in that environment. Hear me? Your life becomes accelerated when you understand the law that governs reception from the body. You may not have the physical privilege to meet all these tribes one on one, but there is a system provided for in Christ that will help you to contact all the possibilities that they have. Please hear what I'm teaching you and you will rise like an edifice. So, call this the prophetic. Call this the healing ministry. Sorry guys, just bring your hands down so you can rest. Can imagine what you are going through. Call this the teaching ministry. Call this the prayer ministry. Call this the prosperity ministry. Call this wisdom and excellence. Call this leadership. It's called the body of what? To teach that this should not be in the body of Christ is apostasy. That it was not committed to you does not mean it was not given to the body. Now, let me tell you where we preachers destroy the body of Christ. Because of our ego, and I understand, it's not easy for we men of God. So be careful. While you are criticizing us, understand that we are humans too. But then, a true servant of God must be able to have the unashamedness to hide your individualism and say, look, this is the beacon of light. This is the lampstand that I present to a generation. However, God's desire is that we open up our spirits to the multifaceted possibilities that exist in his body, not a ministry. By the time I, as a man of God who represents leadership and excellence, tries to give the body a picture that the prophetic is not useful. Are we together now? So you hear me, anybody that prophesies is, is nonsense. All these commercial prophets, they are just nonsense and stupid. Now watch this. When the time comes in my life to need this grace, my hardness 
will stop the Holy Spirit from flowing in that dimension. Because I have refused to admit that it is a possibility that should be received. So my life is limited. For this cause, many are weak. Are we together? And so, this guy has been given the grace for wealth and prosperity. But now, this prophet or apostle knows how to speak. And then, God opens doors of wealth. So, he will look at this guy and say, all these business guys, they are nonsense. Come to me, so a seed, I lay hands on you, your door will open. He's also in apostasy and error. But any move you make that distorts the full representation of the body is apostasy. A deviation from the truth. Are we together? So, I need the prophetic. I need the word ministry for a great meeting. But I need this ministry to run generator and run and, and marry. And are we together? So, ministry is going well and now you are ready for introduction. It's 400,000. Your eyes are clearing. You are trying to use this ministry to get this result. And God says, not so. You must find where in the body is already a provision. It will require humility. But because you have made too much mouth that you don't need this ministry. Now, the ego to now humble yourself and say, how do I now read this business book when I've told everybody that all there is to break through is prophecy? If you are getting blessed, say amen. amen. There are many people's confusion that can end. Look, for instance, there may be someone sitting here now who is praying and say, Oh God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Something as cheap as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, the day of your breakthrough is the day you choose to believe the body. It's not just the day God wants. You can, the Bible says today if you hear his voice That today is the day you read that scripture and believe There are people who You know when people call me and say Man of God I, I, I cannot imagine I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost I say something as basic as that In the realm of the spirit that, that's, that's kindergarten But because you have ignored That the body of Christ can bring these possibilities All you need to do is to know that a house like Koinonia has been committed these dimensions of the Holy Spirit. You don't even have to see me. You don't even have to ask the prayer leaders to pray for you. Just find your way on Tuesday. Stay in that atmosphere and let that possibility... You may just go and... I mean, before the prayer starts, you've received your own. When the donkey... The kiss was missing... They said, let's try to look for that donkey. And when they tried, and it looked like nothing will happen. I hope you know they would have said, Kai, there is no hope of it being found. Let's go back. Just the same way you said, Kai, I feel too much. I can't rise. No. You do not know what provision in the body was assigned for the rising of people. So because you do not know, your ministry will remain grounded forever. Whereas, you are hearing testimonies every day that there were people worse than you who encountered these graces and rose. As I look at preachers, as I look at churches, the privilege of the apostolic office is such that you have the opportunity to bring governmental order to a system and a territory. I can step into a meeting or travel to a territory for a conference and look at the pastors and at once I can know the spiritual dimension missing in that territory which is a reflection of how they have closed their heart to certain possibilities in the spirit. So I can step into a meeting and see excellence but men do not pray. Five minutes prayer you just see them pray and they are sipping tea, taking this. I know that they have ignored this dimension out of the body. Through their preaching, through their saying, prayer is not everything. Get knowledge, get knowledge. And because the man of God does not pray, he has created a theological explanation to justify his not praying. And the members have followed suit. So I look at them, lean and hungry. I know they are weak. When they talk, you don't hear that echo that comes from the prayer life. There is, there is an unction that only prayer can deliver. Bible study will not bring it. When you hear a man speak 
that his altar resonates through his voice. I'm not talking of a husky voice. I'm speaking spiritual languages. Only men of prayer understand what I'm saying. So they come up and say it doesn't matter. Is there excellence? Yes. Are there balloons? Absolutely. Is there a nice projector? Yes. But are there healings? No. Is there transformation? No. People come with their burdens and go back. And I look at that body. And part of the apostolic ministry, please hear me. That's why, let me tell you something. The apostolic office is not name. The apostolic ministry, you know how Anamoeba is. Biology. Basic biology. The apostolic ministry is designed such that when you enter a territory, you can assume any shape by God to let him introduce what is missing in that territory. You have to believe. That's why the true dealing of an apostle is stringent and is almost unbearable because your job is to supply the dimension of the spirit that is missing. That sometimes you yourself are not called into that dimension. But because you occupy the office of an apostle, God will deal to you for that meeting to force you to introduce that dimension. It's God speaking to us. Learn this and you will rise as if the devil does not exist. The body is still rich. The healing anointing is still in the body. He just left your church because your pastor is not willing to accept that he needs impartation of the healing anointing. Are we together? Your pastor has been lying that he's having a heavy healing anointing and is not telling in the stories. And we men of God hate submission. We hate the fact that we can say, I was ministered to and this ministration opened me to this new possibility. We would rather say I labored in the secret place and God gave it to me. Meaning I am the custodian of it is a lie. When Jesus appeared to Paul, he told Paul, I recommend you to somebody in the body of Christ. Go and wait there three days. You would think that Jesus' appearing will mean Paul did not need any man again. But God still drove him. So there are people who have gotten the dimension of the Holy Spirit but they have ignored Papa Kumui simply because they do not like him and the lapse of what he represents to the body is killing them there is a lot of carnality and unseriousness because they have refused to know that there is such a provision in the body there are men who have insulted Bishop Oyedeko and do not know ah God let my people be rich no we are going to heaven they are poor they are broke the ministry can increase they have finished all their prayer all that is needed for the ministry to thrive is finances but they have ignored this provision in the body who is God speaking to tonight see let me tell you why suffer forever when the remedy has been paid for why not open your eyes and humble yourself and allow the spirit of God to show you the system he has built to tap in, in the multifaceted possibilities look at me I say this with all humility there are impotent men and barren women who would die impotent and die barren forever I say it with every sense of apology and I say it with every sense of honor. The, the humility to tap the provision that is in the body of Christ. I once met a woman years ago. I think it was in a meeting quite a long time. Let me tell you, I don't know what kind of grace was on this mama. But if she prays for you for pregnancy, just go and start buying baby clothes. Because you must give birth. It's, the question now is whether it's twins or triplets. Not that you'll be pregnant. There is a provision like that in the body. Is God speaking to us? Have you heard people here look at that lady saying she made her papers? She knew what she wrote. Sometimes it's not your effort. Sometimes it's the cloud that provides certain possibilities. See that? Those who know this never get arrogant. You know. Let me tell you something. I have seen there's one man of God Outside of this country, he's Benihin's son. True son, not just fake stories. True son. That guy is not educated. 
that guy, you will know that this guy does not understand the system of church growth. But because he has been able to identify with what Benihin represents to the body, that guy carries a tangible healing anointing. You see the testimonies in his church, you will think he's a charm. Because he has identified that grace and that office. So let me tell you how Satan destroys us. The devil creates a system that covers away these possibilities. Are we together? Through pride, hatred for the body, resentment, and through pastors. We may be well-meaning and sincere, but he covers us. So as far as your spiritual growth is concerned, and the path of spiritual progress that an, a pastor has earmarked for you, this is all he has shown you to be the possibilities in Christ. So, you have to respect what you have been given. But you know you are dying of pest. You know you are not communicating. There is no revelation in your life. There is no prayer. There is no access to the prophetic. Now, you can stand there. Your progress is based on how much of the body of Christ you have been open to. You will see somebody will come overnight who does not even have, he has not paid half the price you have paid, but he's foolish enough to contact this guy. He will carry a grace and jump and move. And you say, no way. How can a young man be a millionaire in four months? I don't believe this. These guys are 419. Don't say they are 419ers. If you have not tapped into the provision in the body of Christ, is it not a prophet that said, by this time tomorrow? Have you not read it in your Bible? Not to a person, to a nation. Israel, a nation that is a desert land till today, is still exporting food. And Nigeria, 80% of the food we eat is exported. Israel is in a desert land because there is something upon Abraham that landed upon them. Do they believe in God? No. You will imagine. Let me tell you, those who have gone to Israel, you know. Those who are helping you in the facilitation, they are not born again. When they watch Africans come and cry on the wailing wall, they wonder, Oh, Jesus, my Savior. They are just waiting for you to give them their money. They don't believe in God, but they are part of a tribe that God has covenanted with himself that they will keep seeing certain possibilities. Koinonia, are you hearing what I'm saying? I give you a guarantee. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, your life will rise like day and night. My only prayer is that you will not suspect yourself when you are rising. There is a way you rise too fast that you turn and say, ah, I hope I didn't put my hand in anything that is ungodly. I can't understand why my life is rising like this. Listen, whatever you see happening in the life of one man in Christ came from the body. It's reproducible. It, is, it has the ability to be transferred and it has the ability to be recreated if you understand the laws that govern it. People kept criticizing William Branham I didn't used to work so much in the prophetic. Here and there, one word of knowledge, everybody teaches on William Branham, and they made it look as if the guy backslided, went to hell. He's, in fact, he's, I've read William Branham's books, I've explored his materials left, right, and center, including those where there were a lot of erroneous propositions. But let me tell you something. The earth will hardly find a meek man like William Branham. Very few prophets on earth today have come near the shoes of William Branham. It's just that there was no mechanism of preserving their audios and their videos like we do now. So you may just watch one or two videos where you don't see anything. Those men live like gods upon the earth. They are the ones the Bible says the earth is not worthy of. Are we together? William Branham. Every time people criticize him, he brought error to the body. Yes, there were imbalances, but he's a man. One day I was watching his video. I think it was a retreat. Heavily under the anointing, I was watching his video. And something happened. As I was looking at him, I said, oh God, but there is, we, have, we have insulted the anointing out of this man. There are, there are possibilities that are supposed to come to the body that we ignored because of our our attitude of, of that judgmental, cynical attitude we inherited from our parents that is still destroying people and churches today. 
while I was watching, something happened. Now, I have a lot of encounters. I live in this realm. But then, it was like, it was like, you know how you pour oil on someone, but it was such a cold sensation. Not just the sensation you have. I knew something was happening. I was looking at this man. My eyes were heavy with tears. And it's as if it's a machine going down your body. Slowly. It took maybe about 30 minutes to go down and reach my feet. I didn't know what had happened. And every time, let me teach you a secret. Whenever you have an encounter, you don't understand. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues will begin to give meaning to it. Not, not pray for five minutes and sleep. I mean, stand up and pray. It, it's like a shell. You are opening it up spiritually. And your mind will begin to receive the impulses that have been communicated to your spirit. I began to pray. And the next meeting I would go for, it was, it was, like, it was like somebody just washed my eyes with water. And all of a sudden, I saw that there was a heightened prophetic dimension, a heightened ability, and I said, wow, something happened. I believe I've not even started tapping into 100 of that impartation that I got. So I'm still aligning more. By the time I align fully, my life will release the full potential of what had come. Because let me tell you, mantles depend on certain atmosphere to work. Um, I can receive a mantle, listen, I can receive a mantle, but if my mind is not developed, I will limit the access to that mantle finding expression. Are we together? So I can function and you may see me. You can carry the anointing upon my life and produce more results because the anointing is coming on a body that has been better prepared. Moses was his tamara, so he could not manifest the prophetic anointing on him so much. But when that anointing now came on 70 people, they could not stand. That's what one man was carrying, yet he didn't prophesy. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Say after me, the body of Christ has been vested with every dimension required to represent God. Say it again, the body of Christ has been vested with every dimension required to represent Christ. Are we together? Now, it's, your, it's up to you to choose what dimension you desire to see in your life. A very shared a testimony, her family, who at this time of Nigeria's economy will call you to send money free. That is not happening in your life does not mean it's not happening. Let me tell you, there are people, this is the happiest year of their life. I can tell you that. Now, it's always insulting when results are not happening in your life and are happening close to you. So you react to it with criticism, you react to it with resentment, but the key is to find out what are you doing. Someone sent me a text and said, um, Apostle, I want you to confirm this. It's like the love of men is waxing cold in the body of Christ. I said, that's an error. Go and think again. The church is rising powerfully. You are the only one going down. Find out what you are not doing. People are praying more than ever before. Oh, come on. Revelation is coming upon the body more than before. Don't come up with your misguided thing that the church is going down. Who is the church? Don't say the church. Say, I, as a member of the church, is hot. Like you can say, I have headache. And then the body can come together and help you. And say, it is true, you have headache. Let's bring you out. Don't use your headache to say the body is sick. Because let me tell you, the church is rising. What I'm teaching you will change your life. Look at our, our brother, this gentleman. Come, sir. You're the person who gave that testimony? Come. This guy came from Benway State. All the way. About to destroy... Come, 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 come. How are you? This guy about to destroy himself to commit suicide. Are you seeing that now? If this guy committed suicide and died, what do you think will happen? We are going to sing. Pass will we pass from the earth and its story. That's we are carrying his grave now. Remember by what? Here lies. What's your name? Our brother James. He died. It's a warning to all of us. No, no, no. I'm not mocking. Pay attention to what I'm saying. This guy 
Whereas one message, one message held the possibility of reviving his life. Please listen. I'm saying this with every sense of passion because we still need to press. We have stopped them. There are some of us who carry these mantles, but they are not developed enough to start serving the body. So your lack of prayer is making the body die in a certain way. This message is a, is a call to rise and develop your contribution to making the body rise. Imagine if I was a drunkard. Or imagine that I started drinking January 1st because I'm weary. The message that would need to help this guy. Do you know standing here may be a pastor or a prophet to nations. So as I, as I refuse to manifest and he dies, the nation tied to him dies. The purposes of God for that nation dies. Look at the ripple effect. Are we together? He has come now. And you can see that this guy is going to catch fire tonight. No, 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 he will. It's not, we have it. This is what I'm saying. You must know what you have as given by God. It's not for pride. It's to distribute to the body. He says, such as I have, this is, you can pray for it somewhere else because it's not part of the spiritual composition of that ministry. But here we have it. It was given. It's an office. The same way there are some things that are not in koinonia. If we need it here, we must open our hearts to other members of the body with all humility. There are some things that don't happen as a gift here in Koinonia. They happen through prayer. We pray and tap. But there are ministries, it happens like breathing. Some of you receive a lot of testimonies. If you see someone rolling under the anointing in Koinonia, you will not be surprised. Because it's an office. There are churches, if one person is rolling, the pastor says, I've been telling you that God has increased me. I've been saying this thing. Now, it's not to mock, it's not, it's not mockery. I'm saying there are spiritual possibilities. How you know what is available in a ministry is what the people in that ministry trivialize because they've seen it so much. It's in abundance. You don't pray for it. You don't fast for it. You enter this place and you are shaking like a leaf because there is a covenant that makes this possible. This is a gentleman. Now, if I'm a stupid man of God, I'm going to do two things. And this is a warning to many pastors. When this guy comes now, because he has come to Koinonia, let me tell you what most foolish men of God do. They try to say, you have gone to every other pastor. Are, are, you, are, you, are you seeing where we destroy the body now? You have gone to every other man. But when you came to Koinonia, everybody rises. And me, who is the champion you are talking about, I now rise. Those who do that, God is soon coming for them. Because that attitude is part of why the body does not grow. So, when this brother comes now, I do not isolate my impact to his life as though I'm different from the body. I just tell him, no, no, no. Whatever you receive here, I hide my individualism so that the body of Christ will be glorified. It does not matter that it is Joshua Selman. The most important thing is I have represented Christ properly. Your kingdom reigns. Yes, he reigns. Through this place. right now we are all looking at him what a foolish man of God would do is to make him hate every other man of God who has talked to him are you seeing now I can make this guy hate every other man of God in Benway State or whoever so the next time he's watching TV and he sees maybe a living faith or any ministry there what he's going to say is all of you are rubbish you are wasting our time only koinonia 
Now, it looks like he's glorifying me, but he's destroying the image of Christ. I must leave this guy with an impression that makes him love the body of Christ. Because although he found an anointed man, although he found an anointed ministry, we hide our individualism that Christ be lifted. So as he's going to Benway, I will tell him, okay, take messages, but open your heart. God is doing great things in Benway. He's doing great things in Lagos. Don't even in a city where you think there are no people. I've gone to cities where you think God is not doing anything. But there are dangerous people in that city that God is lifting. So he comes here tonight and leaves loving the body. He comes here tonight. He receives the graces and the mantles that have been committed to this ministry. But he goes back loving the body. The next time he enters a church where the man of God is preaching. And honestly what the man of God is saying is nothing to write home about. He will understand the limitation of that man but not hate the man. So the body has risen. Because a man of God with spiritual intelligence has been able to minister to this. Listen. The ministry of the spirit is very important. That's why you must be thoroughly worked upon by the spirit. I can be anointed, but I will still destroy him. Are we together? How many of us have been destroying the body of Christ with our misguided understanding? And there are many more who want to rise. And so God says, calm down. Before you rise, let me walk on you and say, God, I laid hands on somebody that day and the person fell down. I'm ready to go. And then God says, tarry ye. I'm still walking on you. The body of Christ. Every one of them holding possibilities. Like you have a doctor. Doctors write certain things and recommend other people to a hospital in India. They say there is the world-renowned eye surgeon is in India. Although I'm a consultant, I refer you to that guy. Because this situation, I want you to go and whatever he tells you to do, we can execute it here. That's the medical field. That's why they're helping people. But in the church, I can claim I'm an anointed man now. And then I look at this guy and I say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out that spirit. And then I say, it's done. You too, you know, nothing happened here. Are we together? The man said, if I be a man of God, go and launch into new dimensions. This guy goes back and starts smoking as soon as he gets to bed with because the spirit was there. Unmoved by the arrogance of the man of God. That's how we destroy many people. Someone comes and tells you, I have, I am SS. And he said, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Go. The person comes back and says, nothing happened. And he says, well, you see, faithless people like you, I don't know why there are too many testimonies in my life. No, no. That's a foolish man of God. A man of God who really loves God will say, look, I will keep praying for you, but I want your heart to be open. There are still possibilities in the body. So when God says all things are possible, they are not possible just because you are a Christian. They are possible because he has distributed these dimensions to the body. God speaking to you. Please hear me brothers and sisters. You may be born again and still die in poverty if you ignore what God represents. The systems he has built. You are not going to create. Look, this guy will not pray himself into becoming excellent. No. His prayer life will not suddenly manufacture into this. His prayer life will give him the revelation that will make him come and meet this person. Are we together? This guy is excellent, but he's not going to heal the sick with balloons and stickers. He's going to heal the sick when his spirit is alive and strong. And that will happen when he acknowledges the ministry of his Listen, Meeting the people is not necessarily how to receive. Just being open to the body alone. Let me tell you something. There are ministries that I have received from even more than the members of that ministry. I have never seen their pastors. I have never gone to those ministries. But just because my heart is open. 
I have received wisdom from people like Dr. Mike Murdoch. I've never been to the wisdom center. I've never sat down one on one under his ministration. But my heart has been open to what he represents to the ministry. He's an apostle of wisdom. Whether you say seed, seed, seed is collecting money. I take what I believe is consumable for me. And whatever part I think is an excess, I lovingly just drive it. But I don't throw the baby and the bad water. I know how to receive from ministries. I tell you. This is a message for us. And God is helping us. We are going to really pray tonight. Discerning the body. Give us that scripture again. For this cause. Not for this causes. For this cause. You have written John 10 times. Who told you there is no way out? But sir, I always read. That's what you think is responsible for success alone. But there is a provision in the body. Do you believe this? I remember the doctor when he was giving his testimony. When he came and met me, he said he's going to go and write exams. I said, go and be a doctor. Listen, Korede Komaya, many of you may know him. He pastors a church in Wari. The wife of um, Bishop, um, what's his name? In Living Faith. Not Abioye. Um, Bishop Aremu. They have twins. And so she came to greet the woman. And Bishop Aremu's wife looked at Korede Komaya's wife. And he looked at her and took what the veil she was putting. Threw it on her and said, what are you doing? Go and get twins, Joe. Immediately, she was pregnant with twins. She's giving birth to twins now. Now, you have been crying for twins. But there is a woman with the mantle. She's even playing with it. Go and get twins, Joe. In the body. But there are some people saying, Lord, one child, whether the child is well or not, just give me something that comes out of me. Whereas, the but please, I want you to take what I'm saying very seriously. I am a product of many anointings. I keep rising because I love the body, not just because I'm anointed. I was not born with every possibility in my life. I honored my way through them. And the key is to love the body. The body may be imperfect. I know there are false prophets. But the, the prophetic mantle is still in Nigeria. I know there are false apostles. But the prophetic mantle is still. I know there are money mongers. But there are still people with the prosperity mantle. Don't just because you have one or two case studies. Throw everything in the body of Christ. And you destroy yourself. Is God speaking to us? You have to change your perception. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise, light in the darkness. That is who you are. Sing it to him. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise, keeper, light in the darkness. To you. you can choose the way people are trying to be established and be established at 45 and build your first house at 55 and die at 60 of high blood pressure or you can find out Lord is there a system you have created that can help men run Elijah told Ahab saddle your ass Ahab always knew that if you must run you run on donkeys so he had the best donkey but there was another system Foreign to Ahab, but the prophet knew it. The Bible says the hand of God came upon him. Let me tell you something. All the methods you know is not all there is. There are faster and more effective routes to anything. I have seen men, brothers and sisters, within two years of their work with God, they have carried graces and unctions that will make other people angry and say, I sought God for ten years before the healing anointing came. I don't know how you sought him. But this brother sought him in a system that made two years become like 20 years. This is the key to advancement. If God says this is our year of multiplied grace, then there is a technology he wants to give you to run. Let me tell you, we have been working, but it's time to run. It's time to run. The key is discerning the body. The key is discerning the body. 
the Lord instructed me to empty my account and sow it into a particular ministry. When I did that, I was shocked. It was like charm. One month of non-stop favor. Permit me to use the word wicked favor. I've seen favor in my life. The same way I have seen pastors who just came and sat down. Some of you are like that. They came from other ministries. They never go to see me. But they went back. And all of a sudden, their next meeting, things just changed. One man of God went to, I think it was Bishop Oyedeko or so, and sowed a seed. I shared with you the story. Oyedeko said, now that you have come, it's recognized that you have a church in your area. You know that looks arrogant, isn't it? But the man knows what he's saying. The man went back and in one service they had 500 newcomers. 500. 500. Listen. The men of God and the spiritual structures that carry these systems may have their arrogance. They may have their imperfections. But create a system to look beyond it. You know what you are finding. If you find God, you will find Him. If you are finding a loud, you will find Him. But for you to think all you have seen is all there is in God, you are joking. Please hear me. This thing called favor does not just fall on people because you read it in scripture. There are men carrying this thing bodily. It's like a mantle on their head. Anywhere they go, anywhere they go. We were at the airport. I was just sitting down. We were waiting for a boarding call. And while we were sitting, a gentleman just came, a man of God. He said, sorry, are you Apostle Joshua Selman? I said, ah. Somebody has come to embarrass me again. And then the person, you know, we just spoke and he just said, excuse me. He just went and put money in an envelope and brought it and dropped it. Just like that. Is he working in your life? Some of you know. Why? Because you think it must come through your personal secret place. Look, God has created, do you know the spiritual discipline it takes? For a man to carry some of these things. People have labored for you. So that by the grace of God and through the power of a corporate life. You can enter into certain possibilities. Trying to dig the well afresh. Your lifetime is not enough to enter every dimension by yourself. If it takes 10 years to catch a particular spiritual possibility. How long do you have to live? To get all of them. So God has created men. Your honor and your love for the body opens you up automatically to that dimension. Those of us who have the art of criticizing the body, you own your television and everybody, you keep scrolling channel after channel, insulting everybody. You go to church and your pastor, you look at him, saying, all these Anglican people say, they are about to just keep quiet. Look for Christ and you will find him. Look for excellence. You will find it. Look for anointing. Look for prayer. Look for these graces. And you will find them. That's what I've chosen to do. I'm, I'm like, that's why I told you I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. I go around the body of Christ with my bag of treasures. When I find it, he said they are life to those who find them. That's how we found the grace for long life. That we transported like gold from Equity State to Koinonia. We landed it here. I know how it came. It came from a city and a territory that have a covenant of long life. 141 years still alive. I said, no way, we must receive this. Our seed went for it. But those Yoruba people prayed for us with their... With, the mama prayed on barefoot. When it landed on my life, I knew. We're coming back from Yola. There was so much trouble, turbulence in the air. They had to turn back. The plane turned back from Yola back to Abuja because the turbulence was too much. Now, when they carried us, I mean, it was as if we were going to drop. God is my witness. I was sleeping. Kai, the mysteries that surround my life are many. What you see is not all that there is. You try it and see. It's like Obama. You know how Obama is walking. You want to shoot him and you just die. Somebody shoots you from where you do not know because they are watching. The keeper of Israel. He never sleeps nor slumbers. He's watching over me. That's my testimony. The keeper of Israel. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Yeah. 
peace watching over me. There are men that have a covenant of deliverance with God. They will enter trouble as if there is no tomorrow. God that to say, God will show up. When you have even concluded, David was such a person, Psalm 3. Many a day, he said, how many a day that trouble me? Many a day that rise up against me. Many a day that say, where is his God? He said, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Listen, it's not every man that said that. They didn't have it. David had it. It's called the covenant of peace. In the Hebrew, it's called the covenant of shalom. Peace. The covenant that makes God show up when a man has trouble. There is such a covenant. There is such a mantle. You need it in this Nigeria. You don't need to look for trouble. You just need to be a Nigerian. Trouble will come and find you. But sometimes you cannot defend yourself. But when that mystery is at work, you will see God turn things. It's like Ojoro, they say, no, 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 but I know this person is supposed three causes. I understand waving one, but three causes. Why you? There is something they do not understand more than the Senate of APU. I want you to believe this. Men walk upon mysteries. That's why two people can go through the same thing. Another person will die. But another person said, I don't know what happened. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see. My troubles held me down. The pressure led me down. God kept me. So I wouldn't let go. His mercy kept me. So I wouldn't Listen, there are lots of ladies who are saying, no man has come to ask me out. I know I'm not pretty. It's a lie. It's a lie. There are married women with 10 children. And somebody is still saying, sorry, can we have dinner? It's a grace. Well, you can argue it because you went to school. I'm telling you, it's a grace. You see, this education is good, but you have to be careful. The realm of the spirit is far superior. To the intellectual realm there's a gentleman in this ministry i've never seen somebody with that grace there is nothing he does not do that doesn't prosper he has done all kinds of things if that guy sells pampas i don't mean it in a shop from his house there are no children here but you will buy it something will make you just say let me buy it and give somebody as a gift that's the kind of grace he has i know people who have their shop they sit down alone and eat everything in the shop because you have business intelligence but you have not opened up yourself to that dimension please as we begin to pray let your prayer lift you in the spirit where you stand for where you have ignored and let's cry out and say lord there is no prosperity in my life i've been trying to fake it but this thing is not there let it come do you know if it comes before miracle service, you can have a testimony that dwarfs everything. It's because you think everything you work, you work for is what you must get. There are people who have worked for things. The grace can direct them to you. For this cause, for this cause, there are women who desire men. They have six ladies. And they are about, their home is about to scatter because they are looking for a man. And the man is saying, this is your last chance. If you ever give me a girl, you are following that girl to go out of the house. Of course, that's a stupid reason. But do you know there is a woman with 12 boys? Why don't you exchange it? Who taught you that these things are not transferable? You can transfer a charge card. MTN share. But you can't transfer spiritual virtue. Who lied to you? You break your 2,000 naira recharge card and give somebody 500 and he receives it. And you don't believe you can transfer spiritual virtues? Who lied to you that I cannot impart upon you grace for prayer? The, my agreement with God can come on you. Listen, listen. Guys, I don't know how we think sometimes, honestly. I can tell you, I want to browse. I have 5,000 Naira in my phone. True or false? And I can say, okay, send 1,000. You just need to press a code. 
and your your amount will be deducted. Abi, and then it will come to somebody, and he's just sitting down, and his phone rings, credited with one thousand naira. Did he work for it? You could share it because you are willing to share, and he was willing to accept. Who told you you cannot do that spiritually? You can transfer health, not healing. Health, you can transfer it. Believe me. If you can transfer sickness, why can't you transfer health? Please answer me. Biology teaches us airborne disease. What's the other one? Waterborne disease. And whatever you want to call, you can transfer it. You can transfer wealth. These things are first spiritual. You can receive it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, get ready to struggle in this life. Because it's not by power. It's not by might. We have ignored God's system of making things easy for us. God is not a wicked God. If you do not walk with the body, and this is all you have, you will make God look like a wicked God. Because you'll be like, oh God, help me. Let me tell you, the answer is not in heaven. Someone on earth is walking in your prayer point. And if only your heart will be open. Prayer was not just designed for petitions alone. It was designed as a spiritual system to help you grow. But most of our prayer life has been channeled towards pleading. Because we have ignored the body. Are we together? There are people in life. They may not be so spiritual. But there is, there is no time they cry for help. The help does not arise. There are people like that. Because their grandmother blessed them. And said, may you always find help. She transferred something from her. And it landed on that little baby who could not say amen. The baby grew not knowing there was such a possibility. But the baby noticed that every time I go somewhere, help has arrived. Brothers and sisters, it's a grace. There are people who their grandfathers were herbalists. Babalao, but they laid hands on them and say, may your eyes see. They grew up as children from age 4, 5. They started seeing. They are not born again because originally from God, they were called to walk in a prophetic dimension, but it was corrupted. Although the transference came through divination, when they get born again, God does not cancel it. It only corrects it. There is a switch of kingdoms upon which that possibility operates. That's why when an occultist gets born again, he doesn't stop seeing vision. It only comes back under the authority of Christ. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. There are dimensions of the Spirit that are possible. See, this house, Koinonia, is a great house. This house, Koinonia, is a great house. There are all kinds of possibilities for your taking. Now, you can sit down and argue it. Is this thing real? Is this possible? Or you can say, Lord, I'm tired. It's not this hard. I'm, it's, it's not this hard. Now, for the next 10 minutes, we are going to pray. Listen. Your prayer, you are not asking God for anything. You are just going to pray in the Spirit. I want you to prepare your spirit for a distribution of mantles. A distribution of mantles. A distribution of possibilities. 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 <laughs> Results are possible in the kingdom. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Listen, let me teach you something. There are pastors here. 
You have never seen the hand of God show up in your meetings. It's an insult on yourself. It's not, it's not about prayer and fasting. There are cheap possibilities you can step into. There are churches, there are prayer groups for years. You are four, five, you become 20, you come back to three. Why punish yourself? It's not so hard. Why don't you open up your spirit to receive? There are people, there's no man in your life to help you. You work for everything. It's a cost. Don't think you are making progress just because you have a job. It's a cost to not have helpers show up for you. There is a place called Zion. And God can send help to men. We are a ministry that has been greatly helped by God. Do you believe that? We are going to pray. The next two to three minutes I want you to pray. Listen. Anointing is not just a spiritual thing that lands on your head. No. An anointing is simply an impartation that opens a dimension of spiritual possibility. Please hear what I'm saying. An anointing does not do everything. Your request directs its operation. Are we together now? You don't just say, God anoint me. It's not a wise prayer. Father, everything is working in my life but this prosperity thing. Lord, I don't see helpers arise for me. I beg and I struggle for everything. I get in trouble and pay for it by myself. There is an anointing for exemption. Lord, I see that there is no influence in my life. You know the area you need grace for. I'd like you to pray like your heart will come out of your body. Cry for the dimension you must see in your life.
going to give us three prayer points. I want you to pray it with fire. Because as you pray it, God will answer it. Number one. Father, the anointing for speed. The anointing for speed. That I will run. Everybody will see that this is speed. Release it upon me in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. Speed. Brothers and sisters, what you are receiving in this prayer will speak. I assure you, it will. It will. Please don't think God is playing games with you. We are not serving an idol. I show you a mystery that has made and is making my life. I know what I'm saying. Prayer point number two. Lord, multiply my results. Multiply my results. Lift your voice and pray. Multiply my results. Multiply my results. Financial results. Ministerial results. Multiply my results. Masquerade. There is a language they use. When you see men who are masquerade, they say they cook them. Abi, they say they cook the man. That's why he can speak. That's what is happening to you now. That that thing that they say they cook a man, that you come out and it will be like charm is on you. That's what is happening. The last prayer point, or at least the next one. Listen, people, hear me, hear me. I don't know how to beg you to pray this prayer point, but you've you've heard me say it. I like you to call your helpers. Listen, Koinonia, listen. Until your helper shows up, you can.
can remain in one position for decades. Listen, a helper is not a volunteer. A helper is a man anointed to rescue you. Listen, you may die and not be able to move to certain dimensions until a helper arises. Listen, listen. There are many families with no helpers. There are many lives with no helpers. There are people who need jobs, no helpers. Intelligence, no helpers. It's a prayer I pray every day. Listen, there is no helper that comes on his own accord. They are called. I have seen financial helpers in my life. I have seen all kinds of helpers. Any good information that can help Koinonia, they call me. Man of God, there is so and so. Have you considered it? Listen, you need them to move forward. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, Koinonia, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I speak to the spirit of my helpers. Share the word of the Lord. Show up in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Listen, we are still praying that prayer point. Hear me. I know what helpers can do. Where a man shows up from nowhere and says, I came to help you. There is such a thing. Listen. Listen. Many ladies are married because a helper showed up. Many people have gotten jobs. There are people... I have been a destiny helper to many people. I remember someone who was trusting God for promotion. And in a meeting, I met somebody who was like um, a representative of that company. And I called the person. I said, I know this person. Please, if there is any assistance they can render, honestly, out of respect for me, that guy was promoted to a position that even surprised me. Help us. Somebody needs to talk to somebody about you. You can't talk to them. Say in the name of Jesus. Whoever needs to talk about me. For my help to come. I release you to speak on my behalf. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Oh, I release you. in now, you can't bring yourself out. It's not just by prayer and fasting. You need a human vessel to show up. We are going to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Every mouth
mountain standing before me every closed door standing before me whoever holds the key by prophecy I call the person open that door for me lift your voice and pray open that door says verily verily I say unto you if you have faith as small as a monster seed he said thou shalt say to this mountain listen every challenge in your life has a spirit component to it we are still rounding up but make sure you pray this prayer pray it with everything you have say in the name of Jesus every disappointment Every shame, every challenge in my life, sponsored by hell, I declare that the powers behind those problems, you come on that judgment now. Lift your voice and pray. Every power behind the disappointment in my life. of us God wants to bless you but your heart has been closed so you do not receive other blessings from the body this prayer is going to open you up to the possibilities in the body say in the name of Jesus I repent from criticizing the body say in the name of Jesus my heart is open to every blessing Every dimension, every possibility in the body. Therefore, I call every anointing, every grace, every mantle, every unction required for my next level. Come upon my life. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Every mantle.
Except you're under the anointing, please lay your hands on your head. I want to speak to you. Don't worry, instrumentalist, you can play. Exceedingly. for koinonia and waste your time. Isaiah 48 Verse 17 Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel Stretch your hands towards me I am the Lord thy God who teacheth thy hands to profit Listen of a man represents his labor. It's the mystery that brings abundance. I want to pray for you. Many of you will enter dimensions of breakthrough. 
by this prophetic act. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands out to you. can stand on your feet the Bible says they know not neither will they understand please listen he told Abraham he said look eastward southward northwards he says everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon listen there is a mystery of dominion that men can hold firm grasp of territories and dimensions. I've taught you there are five elements upon which the supernatural finds expression. Number one is light. <laughs> Number two, fire. Number three, Wind. Number four, the earth. Are we together? One of the mysteries that we're using. Listen, the earth is a universal point of contact. No matter how high a building is, it must make contact with the earth. I want to pray for you. This is a very deep mystery. Very deep mystery. It's time for you to come into supernatural dimensions of influence. This is an impartation for influence. <laughs> listen, listen. When it was time, listen. When it was time for Jacob to bless his sons, he said, put your hand under my thigh. I'm about to speak to you and impart grace for influence. There is a grace. There is a grace. I pray for you. You are stepping upon the ground. I'm not speaking to you now. I speak to the earth. You have ears and you have doors. Oh, earth. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you according to the measure of grace that has been given to me. I pray in the name of Jesus that every time your people are in trouble, for as long as the earth, their feet is upon the earth, let the earth fight for them. Tell me. Job said in times of war you will be exempted because you have made a covenant with the stone. I pray for you. For as long as your feet is on the ground, may no man be able to defeat you. 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 I pray for you. As you are stepping your feet on this ground, go where you could not go. Enter where you could not enter. The unction and the grace for new territories I release upon you now. I release upon you now. New territories in the spirit. New territories in finances. New territories of influence. New territories in the name of Jesus. New territories. I break that ground for you. I break that ground for you. Step into it in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Listen. The last prophetic act. Stay with your feet. Listen. <laughs> ah, yeah. The Bible says, Jericho was a fortified city. No man could break into it. The men, the Israelites, were not strong in themselves. And the Lord said, you are going to use your feet as a prophetic act to bring that city down. It says, walk around. It didn't say sing. It didn't say clap. Use your leg and match the earth. Make contact with the earth from which you came. Seven times. Hold on. I'm not telling you to do it. And the moment they did it, the Bible says, on the seventh day, go around seven times. And then it said, after that seven times, shout. And when they shouted, the world did not fall. It sank. I pray for you. The same way every physical mountain is connected to the earth. There is no mountain hanging in the space. It makes contact with the earth. I pray for you. In the name of the Lord God of heaven. As your feet is stepping upon this ground. Any human agent. Any spiritual agent. Responsible for the predicament in your life. If I be called of God. This night. This night. I declare. May the angels of judgment. Despite judgment. Despite women. I want to pray that prayer again. We are rounding up. I say it again. Whoever is responsible for the tears of any man standing here, as surely as there is a God, please hear me. I'm speaking prophetically. In the name that is above all names, that force that will refuse to let you rise, by the Lord God of heaven, that name called the man of war, Sabaoth, the avenger of men. Right now, I command those altars, wherever they are, as you are standing on the ground, may they catch fire now. Right now, may they catch fire now. May they catch fire now. May they catch fire now. I release your breakthrough. I release your healing. I release your miracle. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like to prophesy and say I'm rising to another dimension. No force. Go ahead and pray. No force. No power. No spirit. Are you praying? No force. No power. No spirit. No force. No power. No spirit. Hallelujah. Every family under shame and disgrace here. I declare in the name of Jesus that that plague of shame and disgrace comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. Whatever has made a mockery of your family before men, they look at you and it's like a subject of apology. By the mystery of the body, I pray right now, let things change. Let things change. By the supply of the Spirit, let things change. Everybody here who has written an exam, who ordinarily you are supposed to fail, it would have been a carryover now. I pray for you. I sense it from the realm of the Spirit. 
I change it from the realm of the spirit. By the mercy of the God of David, by the goodness of the God we serve, I change it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every academic breakthrough you desire that ordinarily would not have happened to you, I pray by the grace that is upon this house, step into that desire. Step into that desire. Step into that desire. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Hear me. You're here and you've not committed your heart to the Lord. Please keep standing. No moving around. Jesus is not a herbalist. The blessings of the kingdom are for those who genuinely come to Jesus Christ. There are men and women here, inside, outside, thousands following us, who by this meeting tonight you have seen a need to come and surrender everything. I don't care how many times you have come out for an altar call. There is a need in your life to come to Jesus. And there are others who you have given your heart to the Lord, but you still see a need to rededicate your life. There are things that are not going right in your life and you are saying, Lord, I don't want to miss out on this. Please, we have just two minutes for this. Wherever you are, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. First overflow, second outside, those following online. Wherever you are, you are giving your heart to Jesus. You are saying, man of God, if you will lead me to Christ, I will be glad to accept him. And you are saying, I will dedicate my life to be serious with God. Make your way to the front. Jesus is calling you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Don't be ashamed. You're welcome. Make your way to the front quickly. Boldly and gallantly make your way to Jesus. Keep coming. God is speaking to you. Don't argue with the Spirit of God. Leave your seat and make your way to the front. God bless you. Keep coming. Man of God, I want the new beginning. The new life. I'm tired of the things happening in my life. Can God give me a new beginning? Yes, He can. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. God bless you. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. I don't care. Make your way to the front. Jesus can give you a new beginning. Jesus can give you a new beginning. Don't let others stop you from coming and don't keep clapping for others if you are supposed to be here while you are clapping stand up and join them some of you as you are clapping your heart, the Holy Ghost is saying what are you still doing on your seat leave your seat and join them don't just clap come he's calling you if you hear his voice don't pretend that it's not his voice the devil will not ask you to come for another call The devil will not ask you to come for another call. God is still speaking to me. There are, there are more people. Please. We are waiting for you. Inside and outside. The third overflow. There are three people God is speaking to. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Don't play games with your destiny. There are many depending on this prayer you are praying. Young and old, rich or poor. Make your way to the front. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. You didn't come out to recite a poem. You didn't come to sing a song. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you, it's the beginning of a new day in your life. Since you were not ashamed of God and you could come and stand and say, yes, I want a new beginning. There are others still seated who would have come, but they are afraid and ashamed. Just make sure that as you're standing, you mean business with God. You mean business with God. I want you to lift your right hand to heaven. Don't lift it as if you are afraid. High to heaven. And say after me from the depth of your heart. Say Lord Jesus. Say it again. Lord Jesus. I truly love you. And I believe. That you are the son of God. You died for me. To give me a new beginning. I declare. That from today. I hand over my life completely to you take absolute charge and control of my life from today I declare that Satan has no power over my life 
I'm a child of God. I'm a citizen of heaven. Eternal life is mine. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you, Father. I pray for these gentlemen and ladies. From today, no going back. You're going ever forward in the name of Jesus. The grace to live a victorious life is released upon you. From today, I declare that the blessings upon the body comes upon you. The grace upon the body comes upon you. The possibilities upon the body comes upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, 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 leave him. Gentlemen, go and join them. You don't come and stand in front. Join them and pray. You had the prayer point. I know that God has touched you. You refuse to come out. The Holy Ghost brought you. Say after me, I'm praying for you. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Lift your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm a child of God. I'm born again in Jesus' name. I bless every one of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will rise from glory to glory. The power of the flesh, the power of this system is broken over your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Now very quickly, hold on. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want all of you to follow the gentleman waving his hands very quickly. And as you follow him, he's going to have your details and we'll get in touch with you. God bless you and I love you. Tonight we ask that in a very mighty way you invade this place. Make your presence known in an unusual way tonight. Let the saints be equipped. Let the church be mature. Let mighty men and women of God arise, O oh God, from this place. Reveal your glory. Multifaceted dimensions. And cause our hearts to be enlightened. Let your word break every stronghold. Tonight, let the sick be healed and let the oppressed be delivered. Let our destinies change forever. In the name of Jesus. It's in your glory I will stand. I will stand and lift my hand. It's in your glory I'll receive Every miracle you have for me It's in this glory we will stand We will stand and live hands in your glory we'll receive every miracle you have and abalaka brandos he who has the sun has eternal life we have the sun so we have eternal life yes we have the sun so we have eternal life we who have the sun we have eternal The sun, so I have eternal life. I bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, and I forget not your best. 
Lord, we cry for a visitation. We do not want to be so familiar with your presence. We cry for a fresh Mighty one, we cry. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed be hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. Sing, we cry, Abba Father, hallowed. But thou, O Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head lift your voices and sing but thou Lord had a shield for me my glory and the litter of my head but thou Lord had a shield for me Just one more time. Hey, but thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the litter of my head. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the litter. Jesus, we declare 
that you are the lifter of our heads everything that you have done in this place we give you the glory for it for the miracles the healings the signs the wonders no man can do these things except god be with him and lord we thank you for your presence without your presence there is nothing we have without your presence we have no message your presence is the life transforming factor and we thank you we thank you we thank you prevail over us tonight oh god we submit our spirits and our destinies let the refiner's fire build us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah walk up to two or three people just welcome them Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see, As a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself. As a true minister of the gospel, your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power, the life, and the glory of God. Let's look at the scripture. Jeremiah 23, verse 4. Jeremiah 23 verse 4 it says and I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the lord he says and i will set up shepherds over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man, a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven not just any revelation you read around but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building changing empowering the people see our ministration in the new testament is that of the spirit meaning when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing you are receiving more than information is that true there is an activity is a transfer this is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word that while you are sitting right now listening to me there is a spiritual transfer something is entering your spirit Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the Spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? 
but there is an impartation upon your spirit man and that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught without the spirit backing the word there is no supply of grace to become it says as many as believed in him even to them that believed on his name he gave them what power to become not power to hear power to become meaning that when the word of god is taught in truth it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good it should activate something in your spirit and make you become it because the word of god is not a thing the greek word word is logos right and jesus the word is called the living logos is a person you can listen to my message the living logos meaning the ultimate desire of god is not for you to learn scripture the ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and i trust that the lord will bless our hearts in the name of jesus christ i'll share with us a few thoughts that the lord put in my heart and i trust that god will help us hallelujah first john chapter five one of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of christ especially pastors preachers is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army hallelujah it doesn't take being spiritual to have information it just takes being passionate you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big like an ancient door or a gate if i will call it and when i looked closely i found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors actually a door many smaller doors are you following me now and on every one of those doors a scripture was written i saw the doors opening and closing meaning behind the letter behind the grammar behind the greek and hebrew and aramaic there is a spirit waiting to transform people the assignment the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life the spirit of life not just the spirit of truth the spirit of life he gives life to the information you are hearing and then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now so there is a lot of church going on there is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings but what we have done primarily as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing so it's just about theological dissertations or greek and hebrew somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read greek and hebrew and express you know the words in greek and hebrew and bring new words we think that the anointing is in the greek or the anointing is in the hebrew or the anointing is in the english or the communication there is a spirit there is a spirit that's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed there is a spirit listen 
as i'm talking to you right now there is a spirit that is compelling what i'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded that's why you can bring somebody that is hardened somebody that will even swear that i won't listen to god i won't do anything and when he sits down under this anointing from the prayer to the worship there is a spirit there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying now it is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on and all of a sudden you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn probably even insulting the meeting and yet he's silent and then paying attention listen i want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit everything we are doing in ministry is useless get this get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege for god's people to be gathered here week in week out some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ But what we have not taught people, it is a scriptural concept. The Bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. That the mortal can become the immortal. That the natural, the terrestrial can translate. There is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That divine dimension, brothers and sisters, is what we are called to demonstrate. A believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit 
it's not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things. First John chapter 5. Verse 11. And this is the record. Or this is the testimony. That God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it eternal life is not life after death listen listen eternal life is not life it's not the life you receive after death right what happens after death is the consummation the consummation right eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means your coming to Christ or your coming accepting the Lordship of Christ in itself is not even the end. It is the spiritual system with which the life of God gets to you. The Bible says the life of God is hidden in the Christ himself. Right? The Son of God. So the way you receive that life is to receive the Son of God. That's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me. Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life 
is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ The beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is no initiation into the realities of the New Testament, right? The, the, the whole New Testament starts, the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Never alone, for with God, all things are possible 
outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the, the experience of it is manifest here and now. That's not true. Paul himself speaking to the Hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify, right? And he tells us certain things. He tells us we do not yet see all things. Let, let's turn there. Paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth. Hebrews, are you blessed tonight? I have the sun and I have eternal life. He who has the sun has eternal life. Two verse seven and eight. Let's look at seven and eight. Hebrews two, verse seven and eight. It says, Thou hast made him remember. Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this. He said, to none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, talking about man now. He said, you have made him, or in, in, in uh, talking about Jesus now in his earthly work. He says, you have made him a little lower than the angels, the word there was mistranslated. It's supposed to be uh, angelio, not necessarily like the beings, but it's an expression of God himself. Many times you see the Bible use the word angel to mean the very Lord himself. Is that not true? Many times in scripture, you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics, meaning that there is more explanation to it. It doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the Lord, but God himself. So it says, the word there is supposed to be, thou hast made him a little lower than Eloha, God himself, the Almighty. So Jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth. Right? It says, thou hast crowned him. Now he's talking about his coronation. This was the coronation that David saw. The Lord said to my Lord, right? Sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So he says it here that thou crownest him with what? Glory and honor. And you did set him over the works of your hand. Verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. That it, Listen, I hope you realize that in the New Testament, you are not anything until Christ is first it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So every time you see the Bible talking about man, find out whether Christ has become that thing. If Christ has not become it, because he must be the firstborn in all things. Meaning, the dimension that the Christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earth work of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if I stayed longer, I would have unveiled more possibilities. Now, if you have my life, I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities. And immortality is one of the possibilities in that life.
divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that jurisdiction is it not in your bible so when jesus resurrected he now said now the scope a coronation has happened to me right the same way it happened to adam that dominion mandate has been restored and he said now all authority has been given it says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come 
that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality he says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can not bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get here so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned let me tell you sincerely at how distant we are from the things we talk about the things we claim and the experience of the same are you getting what I'm saying there is too much talk in the body of Christ we must humble ourselves and admit 
that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who God is what he can do we make such bold statements about God but when it comes to bringing God in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the Bible says for instance Jesus Christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that how many of us have been able to reproduce that reality we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it Romans chapter 8 let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously and if we do not change a lot is going to go wrong Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they, they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people
carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent I'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kind i beg jerry I'm talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid yeah, i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it 
let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid the right spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while the, the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life look at what we have taught people about faith today look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of christ that we call faith right we teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo that's why it's not working let me tell you faith is a product of an encounter when the bible says faith comes by hearing do you hear what you read answer me you see we need to examine it was talk it was a spiritual language it was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word the days that are coming will be fierce the days that are coming will be spiritual right now have you seen the way the world is going lately there is no embarrassment about spirituality again is that true everybody is opening up it used to be in secrecy before but right now there is an open confrontation it's like everybody is saying kai i'm not hiding it again i'm gay simple kill me if you will kill me up it's not today it has been like that another person is saying it's not only you two of us too another person is saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see 
the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in First Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, the, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I mean, too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about uza in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. 
Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings. You know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals today if we were before the red sea this is what apostle joshua selma would have done engineers where are you the spirit of bazalel and then we'll start constructing a bridge we're saying that if i'm a prophet in five years we'll cross this red sea see that that's how we would have worked that's how much we have reduced god that's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start the architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by apostle joshua selma shame on us because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11 there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening all around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? God. Look at look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural. Or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not
the divine life. We shout Zoe, we shout Zoe, but there is nothing Zoe about our lives. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me. Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you, if we learn how to receive that Zoe life, you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I plead in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one koinonia We'll just sit down and we'll discuss. And I'll share with you some of my encounters when God began to walk with me. Some of you, if I share it as you are seated now, you've seen me every day. You've even eaten with me, but you will not believe it. Because you say it's a lie. Encounters with angels. All kinds of spiritual encounters. Because I believe in him. I believe in him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen. At the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Meaning was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I see an angel, say, I beg Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirit? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give it the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondervan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey, witches on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church... Call spiritual growth prosperity. 
since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but elijah not in a radio station he made a declaration to the heavens he vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said me i speak there will not be rain not god revealed to me i stand in my office over this territory and i said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of god have disgraced themselves on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you see we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We are back. Must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me God taught me so many things 
secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced god is this is too bad to an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up people look and they say kai who knows him look at how you put pressure on men of god people come for miracle service we have to be asking them where are you coming from so that you don't think that they organize things around it's a shame it's a shame It says he that has a son has life has life look at what jesus did an example of what we should become jesus five loaf and two fish he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here. You have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior. But there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors? and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question god is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this god is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with god eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, He's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you. And begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, 
like like solomon an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i was sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time i would meet that man was in a vision the first time i ever saw apostle paul he was in a vision i didn't even know he was the one i just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me then i asked who are you and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no right now everything we do is sensual and carnal the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by god it was the spirit of god that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good i've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. You're a visitor, you're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things you say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, you are, you are the spirit of this. You are the, and then he says, who do you call me? And you say, I don't know you. And he says, now write, my name is the spirit of life. And to you, that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance that you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple your temple now not a building is filled with his glory and songs begin to come look at what musicians write nonsense they, they write songs that don't bless anybody 
they just come up with songs the reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income when was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit when was the last time you went to minister man of god and you stood in that meeting and when you finished people were shaking they could not explain what happened they knew that something heavenly like the dew of the morning came upon them they may not even remember what you thought but they knew they carried the spirit when was the last time because of your teaching someone just turned and said lord i will seek you and lock yourself three days do that today in our generation and people say you are over spiritualizing things so god is not like that this guy came all the way from where from from jigawa state to come for a meeting because there is a hunger it's not a conference it's not a convention but hunger brought him right god must show us something in this generation otherwise these games that we're playing will end up frustrating us god must show us something that's my cry as a man of god i cry to god and i say lord i don't want to do the ordinary there is something you've got to show me that's why i love my secret place those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street, eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory my ability to translate the realities in christ let me tell you something my my goal i've seen it in visions but they have not happened i saw one time in a vision let me share with you one vision that i had one time i i say it jokingly but truly truly i had a vision and a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do its best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing? To see the power of God. Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now.
I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just live it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. And I called the woman out, and standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth. One time, Benny Hinn was laying hands on people, and they were falling down, and Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. He said, give them something. Oh, fine. Can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now? Media is ready with the video. Okay, media. Just, just play. Guys, maybe you can sit down and then after that, you come up. Let's, let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video. And um, it's a video of the supernatural. It's to spoil you and then I'll come up and, and, and wrap up. Very quickly. in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the House of uh, Restoration and Mercy with Pastor Dennis Roja, and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place. Pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met. He's so precious, has just a small uh, work and a very humble work. It reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things. Um, Pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and 
sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here, uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones, little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has and at the same time these kind of um, manifestations are happening in fact he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church off the beams onto the floor onto the seats and it's just non-stop continuous pouring out of oil at the same time these manifestations are taking place um, there's souls being saved, there's people being healed, intense worship and prayer, uh, deliverances, people are being set free. This is truly a move of God and that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. They will get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away the cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying. And they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in in in, in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. 
absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him, uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvests. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to... It's not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things thank god for these things we just finished a financial series but let me tell you the truth god is looking for revivalists god is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with and i've made myself available god knows with my entire life you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep. And weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. And weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion 
comes King, we cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, see, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. of the deep cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne say you are mighty on your throne 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 we refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your Mighty on your You are mighty on your You are mighty on You are mighty on You are mighty on You are mighty on your door. of the deep we cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne we invoke the ancient spirit of the Lord most high Lord we are a generation that will embrace you break forth you ancient Zion's king, we cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh, we cry out, Kadosh. Of the deep, -ta -ta -ta. there are impartations going on in this place. Leke -te 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 -ka -ta. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Break forth, thou spirit of the Lord. We cry out, God, you are mighty on the throne. Zion's King, we cry out, Kadosh, we cry out, Kadosh, break forth, thou spirit of the deep, the spirit 
hope of revival, apostolic signs and wonders, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of power, the spirit of territorial impact, the spirit of encounters, open visions, visions of heaven. Thou spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient giants, king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Enough of nominal Christianity, enough of powerless Christianity, enough of faking it in the name of faith. There is a substance, and this life is in his son. The Zoe life, the divine life, the energy, the ability of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening, signs and wonders, miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. We sing, you ancient Zion steam. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. Cry out in our midst, O God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father. Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power ministry of the spirit that can change lives we will not deviate from the part of the apostles we will not deviate from the part of the prophets we will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress we will not deviate we refuse to bend we refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne. Make up your mind that if you teach, 
you teach as one who has touched heaven make up your mind that if you sing tonight you will sing as an oracle of grace enough of powerlessness enough of ministrations without impact without transformation press for one minute we'll soon round up but press go ahead go ahead and pray Lord I need power in my life I need power in my life I'm tired of faking it I want the Zoe life. I have received the Son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray in one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the Soweil life.
the power to heal the power to alter the destinies of people the power to transform their lives you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty in my life 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 say you are mighty in my life 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 you are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life. That your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders. That when men need God to show up, they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory. I pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven may your words no longer be barren and powerless may your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you may they bring healing may the words bring grace may they bring life like the river in Ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life i pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of god's people may you step into an unusual dimension i'd like you to receive what i'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life not just that which is in Christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of God you took the life of heaven so where the life that controls heaven so where the life that upholds all things I'm praying for you that everything that has defied God in your life in the name that is above all names may that so way life come upon it right now may that so way life come upon every sick body here right now may that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life every 
lukewarm spiritual life the life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not I pray for you let it change from tonight you don't have to tell people you're a man of God carry that life carry that divine life may that life halt sickness from your body permanently this repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong discern the Lord's body father I pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and I stretch my hands and I pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now i declare in the name of jesus that it leaves your body and your life now i cause every pain i cause every situation that is attempting to challenge God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence father we give you all the praise listen walk out of this meeting not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier but a dispenser the bible says the first adam was made a quickening soul a quickening soul can only benefit but cannot dispense but the second adam was made a life-giving spirit a life-giving spirit next time someone is sick around you don't just turn and say bring him to joshua sermon or bring him to this Tell him in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. You have been doing it as an ordinary Christian. That's why it's not working. You have just been doing it and say, after all, I'm a brother. Do it now as one who is together with the Holy Spirit. Always realize that it's not about you. It's about the paracletos. Always realize you are going to preach. Don't just go alone. I'm going to go and minister. You'll be disappointed. Go with him. When you stand on that stage, even if you do not know what to say, realize that there is one, the spirit of life. As you stand to sing and minister, realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies, but you are ministering life. And you will be amazed to see people change. Don't be afraid of confronting situations with God. Without God, there are many things that are not possible hallelujah i want to pray for people here right now keep standing everyone i want to pray for people right now you had this fiery message tonight on the life of god there are people who have not received the son of god you have heard about jesus you may have even preached about him he has been offered to you many times but you have not received him hallelujah there are others who have given their lives to christ but sincerely you know that the name of what you are doing right now based on the standard of god you have missed out on the track of spiritual progress and you need to make your way those two categories of people i don't care if you have been a preacher for 30 years you need to make your way right you say lord this thing i've been doing is not christianity i'm i'm i'm, I'm tired of playing games right now inside and outside please make your way quickly and come to the front i want to pray for you i want to pray for you don't sit back don't wait for someone to come before you god bless you find your way to the front there are many people outside don't sit back make your way to the front God bless you. Koinonia, keep celebrating them as they come.
your life must change. Don't worry. Leave her alone. Hallelujah. Tonight will mark a turning point and a defining moment in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Please draw, draw close as I lead you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Um, I understand there's a woman who there are, there are two people I'm supposed to minister to, but I'll minister to one right now. There is a woman who has been having issues of miscarriage. This is not word of knowledge. I, I'm aware that the woman is supposed to be here. I don't know if she came, if she's around. Is, is that person around or that family? You are the one? Not just word of knowledge. You, you came. Uh, is this your first time of being here? Come. You are the one with that situation? From where did you come? Mina. Mina. How long has it been? Four times. Four times. You get pregnant, you lose the baby. You get pregnant, you lose the baby. We are glad to announce to you that this is where it stops. I guarantee. Listen, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. God did not bring you here to waste your time. There is always a spirit behind it. Four times is not mistake. Four times is no longer biology. Four children, four destinies, four lives thrown away by the assault of darkness now imagine if this was your church and a woman comes like this to come and meet the great man of god then you talk grammar and by the time you finish explanation the bible never said creation is waiting for the explanation of the sons of god it says creation is waiting for the manifestation madam i assure you that not only will god set you free but there will be restoration in your life. You believe that? Lay your hands on your stomach and let's pray. Brings joy. We represent the government of heaven. Lay your hands. That devil of darkness. Your time is over in this woman's life. Right now. You are a wicked spirit of darkness. And you must leave. Right now. Go. Out of her. By the power of the Holy Spirit, there is an anointing coming upon you for you to be free of this nonsense that the devil has planted in your stomach. I feel heat leaving my hands to you. That wicked spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are free of this demonic influence. Not only will you give birth, you will go and take in immediately and your child will stay. You will have as many children as you want in the name of Jesus Christ. This thing is not happening to you alone. Huh? This, is, this is a trend in your family. This is because I'm praying for you and I see a spirit. Huh? I'm seeing a trend. It's something that keeps happening. People miscarry and people have all kinds of things. And so it's not like it's something bad you did as a person. Are you getting my point now? But Jesus Christ set you free. Where's your husband? He's in Mina too. Go and tell him that not only will the Lord um, bring a child to your family, God will turn around your entire lives because you are here. You believe that? Father, in the name of Jesus, confirm your word. Like Eli, I speak to you like you spoke to Anna. Go and come back with your child. It's done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those of you coming, uh, I want you to lift your hands. Please, you are not reciting a poem. Young and old mean it serious with Jesus. See, the trouble is when people come out like this, they suddenly remember that they were emotional and they came out. And then they are embarrassed and then they are ashamed. This is serious business. Hallelujah. Say after me from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i believe in you some of you as you are praying the power of god will come upon you strongly because the gospel is the power of god right to them that believe i receive your life i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare 
that from tonight I'm no longer natural I'm no longer ordinary the power that raised Christ from the dead is within me I declare that habits addictions and every life that is not consistent with that of the kingdom has no power over me right now the Holy Spirit the very Spirit of God the life of God is at work in me I declare that I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep those hands lifted please father in the name of Jesus I pray I commend these ones to you spirit of the living God you are the life-giving spirit of God I pray that tonight in a very supernatural way you will come upon their lives and you will make them ambassadors of the kingdom right now in the name of Jesus may that life and that power may that fire that all surpassing life of the spirit come upon you breaking every chain and every limitation that comes with the old man in the name of Jesus I set you free to begin to experience the life of God